I'm Rob Van Rappers. Welcome to NBA Now. With me today is Jacqueline Como of Logs Network. They are a 32-state legal network focusing, focusing on creditors' rights. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure to be here. As a chief compliance officer, your role is one of the broadest compliance roles in the default space. Can you tell us about the scope of your role and really how you approach your job? Certainly. My responsibilities are to provide oversight, leadership, and direction uh, to our company, senior leadership, and stakeholders as it relates to compliance. Um, so really what that requires is that I collaborate with business unit stakeholders throughout the company to identify areas of risk um, and the requirements that we're subject to and develop proper controls and policies uh, to implement to ensure and facilitate compliance. And we do that uh, not as a single standalone unit. We have a legal and compliance committee and that committee is comprised of uh, approximately 15 to 18 individuals at any given time. Uh, we have some static seats and there are some revolving seats and the committee is comprised of folks from the law firm, so managing attorneys, senior operations managers, general counsel, the compliance committee, as well as business unit stakeholders, so finance, human resources, et cetera. And so we really do have a great uh, broad perspective for each policy that we develop, each control that we put into place uh, is vetted through that committee. You know, compliance can be a two-way street. It can often be pushed down from federal regulators, but do servicers reach out for more state-specific compliance for their operations ever? They do. We talk to our clients uh, daily, very regularly, and we serve as a partner for them to understand really what the risk that they are seeking to mitigate is and the role that we play in that process. And then that enables us to take that information and go back to our law firm uh, and legal and compliance committee and in creating our own policies, procedures, and controls, we're able to ensure that anything that we implement is something that meets the client's need as well as our own environment. And then we are able to work with our state-specific subject matter experts, the managing attorneys and the, the senior operations managers, to feed back to the clients any state uh, nuances so that uh, they understand where they may have to consider different idiosyncrasies for their own operation. You know, I said you operate in over 32 states earlier, but when it comes to sort of developing uniformity, um, how do you do that for state compliance efforts? So the way we do that is we really do focus on what is able to be uniform versus what needs to be unique. Uh, not everything can be standardized. And so again, leveraging our, our subject matter experts, our legal and compliance committee, and our law firm uh, managing attorneys and, and operations managers, we're able to identify easily based on what is required Right, that's the first step, understanding what's required of you, and then of that, what can be uniform. So for example, we have standardized technology. We're all on the same technology platform. So my information security program can be uniform. Um, however, there are other aspects that require that the local uh, managing attorney considers how he's going to, he or she is going to operationalize that policy in their own environment. Well, let's talk about communication strategy around compliance. You know, how do you handle firm-to-firm -firm communication with your policy and guides? And then how do you communicate with LOG's clients about compliance-related issues? So communication is uh, really a key to successful compliance, especially in uh, an environment like ours where we have such a, a broad footprint. Um, we develop communication tools Weekly, we send out a compliance newsletter, and that compliance newsletter recaps any involvement we've had with working with clients on developing policy or procedure or any state or regulatory activity in the week, um, and we share that with our firms. We uh, have a governance risk and compliance software program where we compile data, and so we're able to share that data not only with the firms but also with our clients as it relates to them. Um, and give transparency into issues or emerging trends and prepare proactively to address them. So uh, compliance is 
communication is critical to our ability to be compliant. And then lastly, I would just ask you, could you give me one tip for keeping legal or servicing you know, operations compliant? I mean, is, a, is it a daily habit? Is there an online resource? The most important thing for me, and I've said this even long before I was actually in compliance, is you have to understand what's required of you to know whether you can be compliant or not. And so I always say start with what's required. If you understand that, then trends, gaps, issues will all bubble to the top and you'll be able to pick what you need to focus on because you can't do it all overnight. So you have to pick what you're going to focus on and start there. So uh, for me, it's start with understanding the laws and the regulations that apply to your business operations as well as the expectations the clients have of your business operations. Yeah, like I said, you guys are a 32 state network and you really uh, have a really broad reach and are doing a lot of good. Uh, so thanks so much for stopping by and talking a little bit with us. Thank you for having me.